Hey everyone, so I updated the RV park acquisition model uh, to version 1.1 and I made enough changes that uh, it was worth a video. So um, I'll make this quick. I'll walk you through each of the changes um, so that you can kind of see what's different from the initial release. All right, so let's start off. We'll start with the um, added initial cap X requirement uh, line here. So um, as stated, I added um, a year one cap X expense and that's in addition to your um, CapEx reserve down here. So if you're buying a property and there's some major item that needs to be updated, you have the ability to add that uh, line item in here. Um, and then you'll see here in our monthly cash flow that it spreads out evenly over all of year one. And then in the annual cash flow, um, it rolls up here. All right, so that's the initial CapEx uh, requirement that was added. Then the next thing I did was I added franchise fees. Um, so you'll see down here, we have the ability to add in a franchise fee, um, and it's a percent of booking revenue. So if we come up to franchise fees, you'll see it's the gross revenue less vacancy, uh, and then it's multiplied by that J36, which is that 10% here. All right, so next thing I did was I switched the OPEX expense inputs um, to be hard-coded. In the previous model, it was a percent of EGR. And I found that when I'd update or play around with the revenue inputs enough, it would throw these far out of whack from where if you were looking at a real property and you were trying to grow it off of historical operating expenses, it just wouldn't line up. And I realized that it wasn't <clears throat> um, a good way to model this, or at least model the um, inputs. And so I flipped that from um, having you input it as a percent of EGR to a hard-coded amount for year one. And it's been obviously much better outcome. So I've changed that. Uh, the next thing added the ability to add asset management fees to the waterfall tab. So um, here you'll see the asset management fee. And this is as a percent of purchase price. Let me just put that in here. So you will charge a fee as a percent of the purchase price, and that's an annual fee. So you'll see 0.75%. And so we'll take that 0.75% divided by 12, and then we'll multiply it by summary cell C13, which is the purchase price here. All right, next thing is added cash on cash metrics to unlevered and levered annual return. So you'll see they're here. And technically unlevered cash on cash is called free and clear return, but I've heard it enough, uh, the term unlevered cash on cash. Um, and actually, I personally don't mind that term, so um, I just put it in here. And it also um, helps when you're creating a return summary. So rather than having to say average cash on cash and the free and clear return, we can just have it uh, as average cash on cash. And that's to the next bullet, which is I added the average cash on cash metric to the return assumptions on the project level returns. And then I fixed an error in cell I-71 in the waterfall tab, which I think was just a holdover formula um, from a previous iteration of that model. Okay, um, I think that's everything. So I hope that um, is helpful with the update. Again, there was enough there to make this video. And so um, I hope this video and the previous video will help you fully understand the model. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.